Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about getting paid less and long-term quality. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, is it normal for slow programmers who deliver long-term quality software to get paid less on the job market? Nope. That's not usually what dictates how much you get paid. It doesn't even always get down to how much skill you have or things like that. It is a entire spider webs, spider webs worth of complicated um, issues that determines how how much you get paid on the job market. So. Usually what people don't really understand about software development is that you have varying levels of quality in IT companies and you have varying quality levels in software and you have varying qualities in software developers. So for those of you who don't understand that, think about literally any product that you might be buying. Some products are designed to be cheap and some products are designed to be high quality luxury brands but just because something has a luxury brand doesn't actually make it all that good now does it because there are some companies who invest more in the brand of their product than the quality of it and some companies make really really good stuff but don't really have a high quality brand and some companies make cheap stuff that is still sort of useful etc etc Software works the same way, exactly the same way. And software developers work also the same way. The problem usually is that uh, it's actually the same thing in product development. It's very hard to determine if someone is just saying or like they think that they are really good at what they do or if they're actually good. And in some cases you might suspect that someone is trying to trick you into believing that they're better than they are. But the reality might all be that yes, that could be what's happening. But it could also just be that they're ignorant of anything more advanced than the thing that they have been doing. And the thing that they have been doing is basic, basic, basic software development that won't fly in a specific sort of company. That is the reality that a lot of people don't understand when they like you have these people who are trying to get into the fan companies for example where they want you feel like it's very difficult they have like these uh, requirements on computer algorithms types of questions or graph searching or things like that and people feel like that's very complicated and I kind of go yeah sure it's complicated but at the end of the day the level of software development skills that are necessary in order to work at the higher end companies is higher than the bootcamp level. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. There's a difference between, for example, serving bur flipping burgers at McDonald's and working in a five-star restaurant. You're doing different stuff. Now, for salary purposes, it doesn't really matter. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that you can be the best software developer who has ever lived and still go and work for a software company that work with low-end stakes, like really shitty products. And if you try to be a long-term quality type of person, just do really well, you're going to get fired. Because in a small little agency or something like that, where they just need to ship stuff that looks nice really, really quickly, that's actually not going to work. It's similar to how if, you know, a car manufacturer who like a, a, a car manufacturer who does like really cheap uh, personal vehicles would ha try to have the same quality process as say a formula one team or something like that they're not going to make any money because the product that they're selling isn't really suited for that sort of workflow and this uh, reverse is also true of course i mean that's the one we usually focus on right you have these high-end it companies or companies who think that they are high-end when they're actually not they just want to be like the high-end it companies and they try to hire software developers who have this like long-term quality software mindset and then they try to and then they of course want don't want to get in these short-term like bootcamp level hacking things to get the type of people but as I've said before that way of working is actually an industry necessary necessity if you're working on 
short deadline small time projects and that's not because you can't necessarily write better software it is because it is the context that you find yourself in it is the business model of the company that it determines how well the software is going to be structured sure those companies also want these slower moving high quality types of people but not at the expense of being able to ship on time and making money and that is at the end of the day the me the main factor in how well software is being produced or like how well you do as a software developer can you match with your skills the flow of the company and the best software developers the best of the best of the best understand when they're in a situation where it's very good to take your time and really do this well and when you have to work really really quickly and just use your mastership and like basically do as well as you can and ship things on time and the thing that determines how much you get paid has more to do with your ability to prove to a company the right company who has the most amount of moolah that you fit into their environment and you can deliver on what they want from their software developers that's the thing that is going to get you paid that's the thing that is going to get you the highest salaries that you can possibly imagine because as i said before if you'd go in with the wrong approach of solving problems for the company they're not going to see a return on investment from you and that is what they care about have you any idea guys how many technical officers and managers and people like that get fired on an almost daily basis from some companies because they want to do things in a way that this company doesn't want or they like there's a business person some of them with more influence someone with more politics on their side or power or whatever who just kind of goes well this person is all about i don't know mob coding and that's not really something that i feel and feel is useful like why are we letting these software developers sit together and talk over there so surely it has to be more economic for us to have them work individually on their tasks they should be doing that and then there's an argument and then the person with the least amount of political voodoo uh, gets fired or f moved or forced to do something in a different way that is how the actual IT industry works that's always how it works it's how most of the world works actually and the payment part of that as I said really comes down to can you meet the expectations and does it have you applied to a job where they are uh, you know actually paying the highest levels of salary or whatever because you can get paid insane amounts of money in quite a lot of companies it's not just the you know if you think that you're going to make the biggest bucks at google or something like that you are kidding yourself there are companies who are going to throw buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of money at you uh, e even in some cases guys I've seen situations where they are paying a person who barely knows how to solve a problem for the company and they're still gonna pay them insane amounts of money just because they s seem to believe that this person is gonna be able to solve the problem because the person who has the truckload of money doesn't really know how much money they're wasting on somebody and how much they could save if they just switch over to another thing it's sort of like your phone plan you might be over overpaying your uh, your telecommunication companies all the time or taxes or whatever if you don't know that you're wasting money and they all th that there are better alternatives well that's what's gonna happen so what I want you to take away from this is that the there is no correlation between long-term quality thinking software developers and getting paid the most it comes down to meeting expectations that's what it always is, to, is down to the best software developers who make the most amount of money who are able to work in every single company who everybody wants is the people who can meet the expectations of that company and that apart from of course knowing technical skills like actually knowing how to do use the tools and produce software and all all that stuff means that you're gonna have to be able to hack things together really quickly because you have a short deadline all the way up to that you have to be able to set a technical roadmap for a project and deliver a high quality solution that works in a high availability environment and with the best annotation as well it doesn't necessarily have to be that but that's the top level and that's the same thing as saying that if you're a really good carpenter you know how to create a sheep 
you know a Kia share or like something very cheap that is sort of aff affordable for people all the way up to being able to build a, like a luxury type of experience for people because that is the range of customers that you're dealing with it's the same thing for our software developers write the code that is appropriate for the customer that you are dealing with the company that you're dealing with and then go and find the biggest paycheck because they're gonna pay you basically anything you want if they believe and see that you can meet the expectations that they have and ideally exceed them. Have a great day.